Color viewers, welcome back to the channel. So today I am doing an exciting thing and I am getting going on my maple syrup evaporator. I actually spent a little time this weekend getting it ready. So let me show you what's going on with it and what I have. So in my last video about getting things going for the maple syrup season, having preparations taken care of, um, I showed my evaporator and we unfortunately had it parked under a window and the window has you know, it was retrofitted for the building. There's gaps in it, there's a crack in the glass. So some moisture, condensation, and snow had blown in through the window and settled on the tops of it. And of course, there's birds flying in and out. So it needed a good cleaning. And I had realized parts of it were looking a bit rough. And there's another um, section of cast iron that sits up here that holds your stack. Um, it's like your chimney to go up out of the building and it needs a coat of paint and it was actually leaving rust on my stainless steel. So uh, there is a ceramic rail, which is like a insulation, non-burnable. It looks like fabric insulation, you know, like fiberglass you would use. And it sits on this rail and your pans sit on top of it. I'll show all of it complete, but here's a picture of what it's going to look like when it's all built. So this actually has been sitting in my building. Um, we got it off season. We bought the floor model and this is a liter American evaporator with WSE drop flu pans. And they're raised flu, there's drop flu. It just kind of goes on your preference. I got a extreme discount by taking the floor model and what pans were available and I saved a lot of money. So let me tell you, you know how frugal I am. Um, we took about a $3,000 savings off of this original price for the setup. Um, they pre-built it because it was a floor model and I have to brick it and insulate it. And I had noticed that some of the paint was wearing off. They don't put a real heavy paint on it. You can pick up high temperature paint at your local store. I found mine at Menards. They have it in spray cans. They have it in brush on, in like little half pints and in a quart. So I'm going to take this and put a heater on it out here. It's supposed to be 65 degrees on Thursday and I would really like to be out there working on this. I think my first batch is gonna have to be on my old flat pan out of necessity so that this has time to cure. And by cure, I mean I have to insulate it with this. This is a insulating backer material. And I started getting it out and kind of sizing it up. Some of my top pieces here were sitting in the open. The moisture of the building made them soft and they cracked. So I might have to get some replacements. Not a huge deal. It's an awful lot like Homosote, and I'm not real sure if it's the same or not. Um, my son uses homoso as an insulating matter on his uh, train layout. It's, I don't know if it's fireproof or not, but this cement fireproof brick is going over it. This is a half or a split block, and this is a whole block. So after the insulation, if you look at my bricking video, uh, you can get a better understanding of how this all goes, but it's a layer of insulation, layers of bricks all over in here and then you build it. So I am going to be painting it and the hold up has been cutting these blocks. You have to pretty much wet cut them or cut them outside because the amount of dust is extreme. Now we have safety masks for that sort of thing. You don't want a little paper white filter mask. You want something heavy duty. The amount of dust is extreme. So I've been learning all about cutting it. We picked up a blade for our saw and we're going to be using this on our radial arm saw you could use it on a chop saw also um, there are angles to be cut so he just thought it'd be better to do it on the radial arm saw or even the skill saw um, we just kind of went with what we had available it's real heavy duty we only have probably five blocks to split maybe seven so i think this will do a fine job this is uh, made for any kind of block cutting or tile 
if you don't have one of these, you could use a grinder. Some people have told me, you know, that they've done it with that successfully. You can pay to have this bricked wherever you buy it, but I read that it adds like a thousand or eleven hundred pounds to a two by six, which this is. Um, it's going to make it really hard for getting it delivered or set up. Let me show you one of the things that I don't like about this setup. So these legs are adjustable and they're adjustable because once you get this set up wherever you're going to be cooking your maple syrup, you have to build a cinder block uh, foundation or platform for it to set on and that's going to become your ash pit. So they recommend that you raise it up 5 to 12 inches to be able to collect and clean out ashes. Now everyone says with an evaporator like this you don't get a lot of ash and I got a lot of information from somebody who has a 3 by 10 and I don't remember how many gallons they said they produced but they said they only cleaned it out two to three times a season and that was like an extreme situation where normally they would only clean it out at the end of season. So or we've been figuring out what to do about that because if later on we want to add, you can add forced air to this Here's a picture of a forced air unit. So that attaches right here to the back. You cut into your stainless steel, put an opening in with an evaporator like this. You have solid grates that your wood logs set on and you need perforated grates to run air through it. So the thing that I don't like about this is the legs. Because it's going to be built up on a platform, the legs are adjustable. But these legs are just one inch pipes and they are threaded all the way down on a tapered thread so you can make it level any way that you need to. And these are going to have to sit up on blocks also. So they don't actually set in with anything. There's no set screw to hold it and I didn't like that. Uh, he had decided we would um, add some extensions on the legs instead of just having them up on blocks and weld it to this pipe. It was kind of a safety feature we wanted to do. Plus then we can have flanges on it to be able to anchor it down and then nobody can knock over a full. I mean, it would weigh so much. This alone weighs a lot. So back to the airflow, you can repurpose different things for doing your airflow. And that air box would be right down here in your grate set here. I'll show it to you when it's all built. Again, if you have questions, ask me, look at the bricking video and you can understand. I've had to learn so much about this and I really wish that we would have worked on it maybe in the summertime and got it set up. But it's always farming and hay and what are you gonna do next? So I actually found out our oil burner that we picked up for a homemade arch for another project has a blower on it and I can use the blower off of this. We basically picked this up for about $50. It's about a $3,000 unit and then if we ever want to use this as the oil fired um, burner then we can reassemble it for that job. Another trick that you can do is buy a bounce house blower for like $60 used for you know $30 with shipping even less. So the airflow is going to help you to create combustion. It's going to burn your wood efficiently, hotter, shorter boil times. That means you're out in the sugar shack less time and you're going to get to finish syrup faster. Every efficiency, every savings you can do. You got to be frugal with your time, just like you do with your money. And this maple syrup stuff can cost so much and it's addicting. One thing leads to another. Here are some things that I want to add. A parallel heater a steam away unit, a steam hood, there's tanks, there's tubings, there's fittings, it just can go on and on and on. Uh, right now I'm looking for a heat source to add to my double cone filter because it doesn't come on any kind of fan and I do all my canning in my kitchen for sanitary reasons. But if you can do it straight off of the evaporator out in a sugar house, then you're getting it hot and then I also am not having any boil overs on my stove. I'm doing a repair on my kitchen stove right now because I broke one of my burners last year doing maple syrup and it just got more broke recently doing canning. 
So everything you can do to be able to keep it outside and keep it cheap. Oh, <laughs> it really takes a long time to get maple syrup earning you money instead of just being a hobby that's costing you money. So I highly advise to fight urges. Um, look over the off season for used items. Uh, MapleTrader.com has a classified section. You can search by zip code. You can search by newly listed. And um, I think you can search by old prices, everything. So you can go right in there for me. I can go down to the Michigan section, see what's for sale locally and decide whether I need something. Um, at the open house in the fall, I had mentioned a filter press that I'd like, but you know, $1,700, I'm not gonna do it right now. I have got this double cone filter that was $475 before you add any fittings to it. If I can add a heat source to it, then I can bottle right from that maintaining my high temperature instead of having to reheat it. If you, if you bottle at a low temperature, it's gonna spoil and it's gonna mold and you're gonna have to, you know, toss it or reboil it to save it. So I'm gonna put heat on this so that I can be able to paint it. Right now I'm taking a wire brush over it to knock off any surface rust because I just don't think that the paint they had on it held up that great, but part of it's our problem from the window, uh, the moisture coming in. But I had noticed lots of little marks, you know, like here, um, I don't know if it's where the door was hitting or if it's just a little nick, but I wanna protect all these surfaces so that it doesn't get rusty. Um, I think we're gonna be using this this year, possibly in the driveway, maybe out in the old sugar shack. We're just kind of up in the air about it, but we took our measurements, we went and looked at blocks to be able to build this up and get the extension for the legs. So painting, extension for the legs, and our foundation for our ash pit are what we're gonna do next. Um, the ash pit is really important. Here is just like a standard spade shovel that I have. If this is right at a surface, So I'm about to head into the house to go back to the drawing table. So to be able to clean out that ash pit that's recessed lower down, you have to be able to have a clean out door that isn't going to create too much draft. So you need to be able to close it. Now, leader's instructions for building this raised portion um, ash pit says to leave it open, but then you can have too much draft, which can um, affect your fire, your boil time, and everything like that. Plus, you know, I don't want to be able to, if we have it out in the woods or in a building, have that hot ash sitting down there um, worrying about it. So I think a closed steel door might be the best way to go. We might have to fabricate something to go over it. Um, let me show you what I've got outside. Okay, so this is a front that he had picked up that somebody had used some kind of probably a homemade maple syrup evaporator, we're not real sure. And they used a steel plate and added these doors to it to become a uh, like an ash pit clean out for, and draft door. And then you're adding wood door. Now we have another one that's real narrow here. And the original unit here at the farm was probably cement block and just small masonry blocks. So this has a double clean out door also, but it's way too wide for what we are doing. Where this one, the doors of it would work fine with just using just the door uh, to be able to clean it out. Or, or maybe just use a brand new steel plate. We could insulate it. Uh, you don't actually have to fire brick your ash pit door. So there's options there. Not real sure what to do about it. If you've made one, let me know how you've done it because I'm just not comfortable with the idea of leaving it open. So this is my arch door and maybe I can see it in better light, but it is just beautiful. There's just a scene of somebody out in the woods collecting maple syrup from the trees with a sugar house. And this is my draft door right here and the start for the stack for your chimney. And I'm going to scrub this up with my airbrush and show you my high temperature paint that I picked up. And 
Also, Leader recommends caulking all your seams. So we picked up this high temperature silicone sealant and I went around all the edges. Now I'm not sure if 500 degrees is going to be high enough. It says for pellet stoves, fire, fireplaces, you know, should work. Every little bit helps. I had saw another person's maple syruping with a I've seen another person's maple syruping with an off-brand evaporator and steam was rolling out everywhere and smoke. Um, this is the high temperature paint. It is made for grills, so it should be just fine. Look at that, 1200 degrees, no problem. So I'm gonna go over these, do a little touch up so I can get it reassembled and finish my bricking and insulating and get back to my plans for my arch. Also sell it in a spray paint for a larger surface, but I am just not getting a high temperature day for a while, so I just thought I would bring it in the house. And of course, this is our house garage. We've got projects going on, and we're using the house garage for storage, as you can see. So I didn't want spray paint everywhere either. angle all you have to do is put your piece in that is going to go in next and this is for the back part of the arch where the slope starts to go up lay another piece crosswise so you know how much you have to take off Oh, 
mess up some things real quick. So that's working on this insulation, and I've got my angle cut for my first board, and I can copy this for the opposite side with the next piece. This is a little tiny corner, and this stuff is kind of hard to cut, it kind of crumbles. So we're going to kind of work with it and do the best we can. my other angle. First I made my line across the bottom. Which I lost my cap. I can't believe I dropped it. What? These little mini Sharpies are perfect for working in the shop because you can carry it around in your pocket and then not sit down in the house and wreck yourself. I think I still want to use this the other way. The corner is not so great. I'm going to cut this corner off instead. Alright, so now I want to copy my angle. So I'm taking my board out from before. And I'm going to make it so I cut this soft angle out. Mm -hmm. 